Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick, and today I'll be showing you how to build the Squid proxy server on Debian with SSL support. By default, the package that Debian builds does not include SSL support, so we'll have to build it from source if we want to use that. We're going to need a few prerequisite packages, and I will list those in the video description. Once that is done, we can go ahead and download the Debian source package by doing apt source squid. Once we have that, we can go into the squid directory and we're going to need to edit a couple of files inside the Debian directory. The rules file, search for the enable ecap line, and we're going to add a couple of options after that. We need to enable SSL, SSL CRTD, and with open SSL. We also need to change the Debian control file, and on this one it says build depends, we'll add a comma at the end and add lib SSL 1.0 dev. Now we save that file and we can go ahead and build that. To build a package, we use the dpackage build package program. All right, so I will go ahead and fast forward this when it's done, and I'll show you how to install that. All right, now that the build has finished, we can go ahead and install the squid packages. They are in the directory above where you built it from. All you need are the squid package and the squid common package. Other ones do other things. And now, to install the dependencies, we'll do this. There you go, we now have Squid installed. Alright, so let's go ahead and start configuring Squid for transparent proxying of both HTTPS and HTTP traffic. So, become root, go into the etc Squid directory, and let's make the directory SSL cert. We are going to chmod that to 700 and we are going to enter it. We need to create a certificate authority and to do that we're going to use OpenSSL. It's going to ask us for a few things. Alright. These things largely don't matter. All right, now we've got our certificate authority. We want to create just a certificate that we can use in the browsers because when we intercept traffic, we're going to need to have our own certificates here. So let's go ahead and copy that over to the Fedora box so we can use that later. So we use SCP for that. All right, so we've got that in there. Now we need to set up the database directory for generated SSL certificates. And now we just need to change ownership of the directories that we just created to the squid proxy user. So try that again. And same thing for var web SSL database. So now we can edit the squid.conf. I'm just going to move the regular conf to a backup because it's got a lot of stuff in there. There will be a few things you probably will want to change other than what I'm going to show you here, but this is the basics for doing transparent proxying. So the first line sets up an access control list of the local network named clients. So we are allowing access to the local host and the clients and deny access to everyone else. We set up HTTP port 3128 and intercept means transparent proxying. Same thing port 3129, this time HTTPS. Intercepting and a few options to do um, the interception. Then it tells it where the SLCRTD program is. That's what generates certificates on the fly. And this is how you do SL interception in SQUID 3.5. This last thing is just a convenience method for making it faster to shut Squid down. The default timeout is 30 seconds. 
meaning when you shut squid down, it takes about 30 seconds before it does anything. All right, so now let's go ahead and start squid. System control, start squid. And the only thing left to do is generate our transparent proxying rules. So first we'll need rules to allow the traffic in. So IP tables append to the input chain. We're going to accept this traffic. The destination port is 3128. We'll add a comment. Squid HTTP proxy. And let's see here. I think that looks good. Okay. So HTTPS proxy on port 3129. All right. That looks good. But now we need our DNAT rules to redirect traffic to it automatically. So let's go into the NAT table and we will add a rule to the NAT pre routing chain. It's going to be sourced from our local network. It's going to be protocol TCP destination port 80. We will add a comment. Uh, transparent HTTP proxy. And the destination is the DNAT chain to destination 172.16.11 port 3128. Now we do the same thing this time port 3129 or the HTTPS proxy and that's port 443. Alright, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and test it in our Fedora install. So we should be able to test the proxy and get into any HTTP sites. So let's try gen2.org. Your connection is not secure. The problem with this is we have not added the certificate. Some websites are actually even more strict. We could go fix this by saying advance and accept that, but Google won't even let you do that because it uses strict transport security. So let's go ahead and add the certificate. So in Firefox, we'll go to Preferences in Privacy and Security. At the bottom of that page, I think it is. There we go. View Certificates, Import. We're going to import this myca.der, trust it to identify websites. If we view it, we'll see Debian local domain, essentially click. That's what we set up just a moment ago. All right, I'll hit OK there. Let's close this. Let's try again. Perfect. We now know that we are transparently proxying through our squid proxy. If we look at the connection, we can see it was verified by Sysenge Quick. Obviously, that's not where Google gets a certificate from, but don't worry, it is still secure. And that's how you set up transparent HTTP and HTTPS proxying with squid and IP tables. Thanks for watching. See you next time.